Alright guys, welcome back to the Existential Way. Kevin Meredith here. Feet on the ground, head in the clouds. That's going to be the title and the theme of this message. Now, I'm going to work from chapter 68 of Kierkegaard Provocations, uh, Spiritual Writings of Kierkegaard, The Eternal. And I'm going to focus on this paragraph, which alludes to such a statement that I've been trying to rightly divide, basically my whole life. But up to this point, he simplifies it. And here it is. Have you lived in such a way that truth was in you? That there was something higher for which you actually suffered? Or has your life revolved around profitable returns? The fact that you got along well only makes matters worse. This distinction the Eternal cannot and will not take away. It will not contradict itself. Two such individuals can, ne can never in all eternity come to an understanding with each other. Now this last sentence, which closes this brief paragraph, essentially the duality, the separation. It's talking about how there are two types of individuals, um, essentially of the faith. But the object of faith is the eternal, to be sanctified into it, to exist in it. All right. So, first off, have you lived in such a way that truth was in you, that there was something higher for which you actually suffered? Now, this is a really good statement, which I believe signifies not only the believer, but also, in a sense, the targeted individual who may believe. Alright? And the second type of person which is signified by this question, or has your life revolved around profitable returns? This second question alludes to the world, but it also alludes to a type of believer, a type of believer that's very common, a type of believer that steers away from the first type of the first type of believer, which the first question alludes to. Do you live in such a way that truth was in you, that there was something higher for which you, can, you actually suffered? See, this is the thing. You have the believer who suffers, and then you have the believer who essentially doesn't suffer. Okay, and, and it really the answer to this is right here. And I'm going to read this second phrase. Christianity entered into the world not to be understood, but to be existed in. Now, we have the type of believer who wants to understand everything that he or she is to believe about the faith of Christianity. But a lot of those times, what's missing is the fact that the Christianity that gets presented to us, usually by apologetics who defend Scripture, um, it's not the Christianity, the true Christianity, that should be existed in. So let me read this one more time. Christianity entered into the world not to be understood but to be existed in. Now, if I go back and I say, have you lived in such a way that the truth was in you, that there was something higher for which you actually suffered? Okay, let me read the second one, this uh, next one again. Christi Christianity entered into the world not to be understood, but to be existed in. So we see that if someone is existing in Christianity, uh, he or she is living in such a way that the truth was in them. 
and that there's something higher for which you actually suffered for. So think about this. We go through suffering, especially as, as TIs, and I like to say chosen, targeted individuals as well, but this is the, this is the battle between Christendom and Christianity. You know, a Christendom is not the truth of Christianity. The true Christianity is when you are existing in the truth. And, and, and the calling that God has called you to is, is something higher for what you, you actually suffer for. And then Christendom, established Christianity, is a type of indoctrination, a type of theology which is understood. It's well understood, but it's not existed in. It's not to take up one's cross and, and follow in the, in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. And so, when you have that paradox, you have an offense of one type of so-called believer against the true believer who's existing in Christianity. And this is why I say a lot of targeted individuals, they exist with the truth. They exist in it. We don't have an understanding about it because our understanding about it, we only know it by the way that we exist in it. All right, and what, and this is the way Christianity entered the world. So we know in Christ's time, you were either following him, or you're, when he came, you were either following him or you were not. And it was, it was, you were existing with him when he was alive, when it began, when the whole thing began, literally, actually, um, really, physically, you know, and so... This is the, the whole gist of what I've been, the dialectic of trying to get across the message, is are you existing the gospel message for your life? Or are you simply understanding it and, and, and preaching it to others as a way of of understanding it, because I see, like, there are, like, a type of Christian who, who, they're, they're very strong at understanding, and if you're not existing the way they are in understanding, you're not existing as a Christian, so it's been, in a, in a way, it's been inversed, you know, and this is why I say, what what does this, this eternal, what is it? What does it ascribe to? Well, first off, like this, like this first verse says, um, have you lived in such a way that the truth was in you, that there was something higher for which you actually suffered? So we know that When you are truly of the truth and you exist in it, you will suffer because the way you are existing in it, the way, there is a struggle, there is a testimony, there is a suffering that the one who understands or attempts to understand does not really understand. See, this is the theological paradox here is the fact that so many people and even so-called believers think they understand. But if they truly understand, if they truly understood, they would be existing in it. Okay, um, I think this is why a lot of people are turned off from me. Even even other, I guess, targeted individuals who are Christians. I think a lot of them are just turned off from me. And they, you know, one of the things I've been mentioning that's been kind of going on in my life is the way that people admire what I try to do. And they may even do that for you. A lot of targets were admired for um, who we are. And, and But when they meet you, there is a fear that comes among them because they really see that you are of the truth. 
you know, and there's a, it's, it's a difference between admiring someone that's not face to face and they're telling you what their experience of existing as a targeted individual is and then they meet you in real life or they meet you, you know, say over the phone or, um, you know, through some type of communication and then it, it's a it's a good start to a very short lasting relationship um, and there's a there's a difference in, in, the, in the system of values that go on you know temporarily and this is kind of something I see with a lot of targets is even these perps they they admire us but then when they have to meet us they they only attempt to understand because they're not of that existence. They're not like that, you know. It's not in them. The truth is not in them. They don't exist in the truth. And so this is, and, and, and it actually goes, in a sense, it kind of goes across the aisle. When I talk about going across the aisle, uh, the established church today is connected to the world. So when the world goes across the aisle and it, and it, and it has a foot in the church, or the church goes across the aisle and it has a foot in the world, um, there is an understanding there between the two, between the world and the crowd. There's an understanding between those two. And there's an understanding between the world and the individual of the crowd. And there's an understanding between the crowd and the individual of the crowd. You know? But when, you're an, when that understanding hits the individual who's not of the crowd, and the individual who's not of the crowd is existing in the truth, um, the whole truth of the crowd is shattered. The whole truth of the, indi of the type of individual of the crowd, you know, just as we've been talking about, say, of the church system, their truth is shattered. And so they, they admire you for a moment, but in the long run, you're, you're, you're going to be alone. Uh, along the straight and narrow, or in the straight and narrow, always, and that's that's the that's this whole paradigm, this whole existence, this whole life that that a lot of true targeted individuals go through is there's a, a lot of admiring by one who 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 attempts to understand the truth until they meet and see the truth face to face. Um, they no longer want anything to do with that, and so they 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 change their their pers the, how they are how they understand truth to those in with like manner. They you know, and that's why your relationships are are always fleet. You know, they're always fleeting. They're always fleeting, and, and and they're admirers until they have to confront who you are in the truth, and then they're offended, and then they uh, then they're gone. You know, and so. But such is the way of Christianity when it entered the world, you know. Christianity entered into the world not to be understood, but to be existed in. And this is why they fear that a lot of targeted individuals, especially chosen targeted individuals, we exist in this truth. We have this truth. And even at times unbeknownst to us, I don't know how, it's supernatural. Um, I, I'm not out to disparage or disagree with it because um, God works how he chooses. It's not for me to decide how God works, you know. And so don't don't let the crowd or let the perp or let the the so-called anybody don't let them tell you that it's you. And and this is the thing that goes on is they tell you that it's you. You're in the negative as a chosen individual. Um, but really, it's not you. It's the fear attachment, the spiritual attachment of fear that they're offended by. It's that spirit of fear in them that the, uh, the, the, the one who attempts to understand, um, and when that one doesn't understand, the spirit of fear is drawn up out of that person. You know, because that, whatever is in that, whatever, that, that indoctrination has a spiritual attachment and it is drawn up when the meeting is face to face and it and it confronts the truth the existence of truth uh, the testimony made to life and um, a lot of us we can't even explain it you know we can't even 
God is God is that good. He just and that's why I say, you know, God he he picks and chooses as he wills, not as we 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 liken we we liken ourselves to him. No. He he really chooses how he wills. Um and a lot of people they don't understand it. So for you chosen targeted individuals and this is kind of why I'm like this message is about feet on the ground head in the clouds is because we got to keep to a certain conscious clarity about the availability and the awareness that we have as people who exist in the truth that we are of that and and we are not the ones who are negative we are see and and this is what it says let, let me go back to right where it says why we suffer and it's once again it's in an open ended question form all right and so it's the answer in and of itself it's very rhetorical have you lived in such a way that truth was in you that there was something higher for which you actually suffered so understand this targeted individuals there is something higher which we are actually suffering for okay um, we live in, su in such a way that the truth is in us. And when that truth is in you, you're, you're, you're suffering for that something higher, which is God. Um, that's why you're suffering. Because the truth in you exists of the higher. It exists of God. It, ex it exists of His supernatural um, place in your life, sanctification in your life. Um, that's very different than, than one who attempts to understand what one doesn't have. See, like you and I, we don't have to understand. Because we already exist of it. And it's not by our doing, but it's by His grace. And the world doesn't want to hear that. The world wants to shun that. Um, because the world is about an understanding. An understanding isn't the same as existing in the truth. An understanding about the truth isn't the same as existing in the truth. The source of existing in the truth is different from the source uh, than from an understanding that's about the truth. And this is why um, a lot of us, we have our feet on the ground. We know who we are in God. That's the feet on the ground part. Um, our head in the clouds part is the fact that we relate, you know, we... we we are an extension of who He is, His source, His Godhead. Um, and then, you know, the clarity that we have is the fact that since we know who we are in God, we now have to, you know, allow God to empower us by His Holy Spirit. Okay, to know that we exist in such a way that our suffering is because... Um, It's coming from a higher place. Hence, it's a spiritual war working um, itself through, you know, the, this dimension, the physicality of this dimension, through certain peoples, through certain bloodlines, through certain tares, through, you know, like tares, but, you know, certain bloodlines, certain, um, and even, even like, and that's why you see it going on across the world, even outside of Christianity. Because, uh, like I said, when you exist of the truth and God picks you out, you could be anybody of any faith, and you could exist of that truth. Now, they may, know, they may not know Christ at the time, but when they're awakened to knowing this, we're seeing a lot of people, once awakened, now coming to Christ, now saying, wait, I... That truth is in me. I, I know Christ now. I know Christ. And so, from there, you've got to take the leap of faith. You've got to, you know, you have to ask God into your life and commit what you don't know, the things you've always tried, you know, in attempt of understanding once you're there. You've got to commit those things to God. You know. So, understand this. As a targeted individual, you are in God's good, good graces. He has chosen you. But do you believe it? And a lot of people don't believe it. They're still attached to the fear that's outside of them. The fear of, of, of approval by man. 
and the system, um, that's not approval from God. So you've got to commit those things to God, but say, how do I commit something unseen or, or, or intangible, something I can't touch? How do I commit it to God? Well, you seek. It's, a, it's, an, it's an inward action of existence. You're seeking. You know? And by seeking, in return, God is showing you to exist a certain way, obediently. Um, and with all His attributes, love, patience, hope, faith, kindness, forgiveness. And so this is what it is to commit, you know, if you're truly changed, if you're truly of, of uh, this eternal existence that, he, that he's put in you, if you are to exist in this truth. And so, yes, you will suffer. There is a, and that's why I always mention, people, people think, you want to resonate higher in the Lord? Be careful what you ask for. You're going to suffer for it, you know? And so, I want to leave you guys with that, but understand, um, there's a struggle against the world because it's, it's, it's God's glory. He, he, he's, he's refining us, and we're going through this struggle, but it's to His glory, you know, that we exist in his truth. So I want to leave you guys with that. Be blessed this week and just, you know, keep your feet on the ground and keep your head on God. All right. That's all I can leave you with guys right now. Okay. Be blessed. And till the next one, guys, I love you guys and Godspeed. Take care guys.